Hi there, my name's Mike Kendall. I've been living with Type 1 uh, for almost 30 years now, 28 years. Um, and I've been asked to uh, just share a few of my experiences of, of using the Libra uh, for, for anyone out, uh, who's not uh, perhaps familiar with it or is thinking of starting and uh, wants to know uh, a little bit more about it. So um, there's a few things that I've done and some of the companies I've connected with and uh, DTN have invited me here today. I first used Libra in 2014. I got invited to a thing because, we write, because I write a blog um, uh, and uh, I got offered the opportunity to try this new piece of technology um, and it was the first time I'd ever had continuous um, information about what my glucose levels have been doing in all my years of living with type 1 um, and, I, and it was just revelation for me and I've been using it occasionally ever since as much as I've been able to afford it self-funding it because at that stage it wasn't available on the, on the NHS and I was tending to use it as a sort of every two weeks or so, um, uh, sorry, a, a two weeks of kind of reset and then a period of kind of like seeing whether it would, uh, my levels were, were sort of behaving and then things would drift again and then I'd use and have another two week sensor in for a reset. And what I've, what I've found, what I've seen when I've been using the sensors is that my glucose levels are always better. It might be a little bit more chaotic when I start using one, but by the time the two weeks has, has run and I've made some changes and, and altered some things, generally my, my results are much, much to, um, better. And then if I keep using sensors one after another, I tend to find that on the whole, that improvement continues. Uh, it, although having said that, diabetes is diabetes. It's still going to be annoying. And there are occasions where it, you know, just things go into chaos. But when I've got the continuous data, I find it's much more easy to pull them back uh, to a, to a more of a level where I'm I'm happy with things. And the first thing I noticed about using a continuous uh, sensor like Libre is that I get three times the information every time I check. So if I'm checking at bedtime and I'm, I'm looking uh, at the number and it's five point six, I might think, "Yay, happy days, good, I can go to bed on that." But with a continuous data, if it's five point six, like on the second one and it's rising, well, that might be all right. I might still have a little bit of insulin active from my evening meal, uh, that might be fine. But if, like on the second uh, reader there, it's 5.6 and a straight arrow down, I can tell that my levels are changing and I, they're changing quite rapidly and that 5.6 is not gonna stay 5.6 for long. So I probably almost need to take some carbs straight away. So the, it gave me three times the amount of information. It gave me the, the, the not, not just the level, but also the direction of change and the rate of change. And it gave me everything else in between those dots. You know, finger stick readings, as brilliant as they are, they just give you pinpoints during the day. Um, but a continuous trace, you can sort of see what's happening in between those checks. And the other thing is that if you are one of the <laughs> unusual people who gets eight hours of sleep a day, or even if you get approaching that, there's a whole third of your day when generally you don't know what's going on at all, unless you are committed enough to wake yourself up and check in the middle of the night. So, so with a Libre, because it keeps the last eight hours worth of data, um, every scan, you can, if, you, if you check first thing in the morning, you see what's been happening overnight every night. So your, your bedtime reading and your early morning reading suddenly can make a lot more sense. You can see what's happened. You get more of the story and you can tell whether you've been at a fairly safe level overnight or whether actually you may need to adjust your basal insulin. Another benefit it gave me was that I found I could just check whenever and wherever I was. When I, 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 when I was on, you know, on the run for the train or in a, in a theater or at a gig or on a running machine at the gym, uh, even the things like uh, silly things like when your hands are a bit mucky because you've been gardening or doing some DIY, if you're doing a finger stick test, you've got to stop everything, you've got to go inside, you've got to wash really carefully. With a Libre, as long as I don't mind the reader getting a bit dirty, I can just fish it out of my pocket, wave it at my arm, and I get the reading. And some of those times, like um, you know, hurrying to a meeting or something, I can actually be expending quite a lot of energy, and I may need to just keep an eye on things to make sure I don't drop. Um, low and with a Libre I can see that I can just check um, whenever I want to and I've mentioned overnight testing before and I, I don't know whether anyone else checks overnight but if I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm a bit bleary and I'm a bit groggy 
I know that I'm actually, it takes quite a lot of effort to think, right, okay, sit up, put the light on, fish about with a strip, you know, uh, and go through the whole process of getting, getting a reading. Whereas Libre, if it's if it's just mobile phone on 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 the bedside table, you can do it. It's it's better for people you're with. If you if you're sleeping in a room with someone, you just wave it at your arm and you get the number. So I know I'm much more likely to check if I'm wearing Libra and I wake up overnight than if I'm just running on finger sticks alone. And the other thing is that is that I can check however many times I want. The information shows that actually on average, people think, I wonder what my levels are doing now, about 16 times a day. Now, some people will check far fewer times than that, and some people an awful lot more. And it will vary day to day, but it's just whenever you think, I wonder, I wonder what's going on now, you can just check. Rather than thinking, oh, but I only, I only, did, a, you know, I only, I only did a test 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, 5 minutes ago. It doesn't matter, because the information is just always there. And that's the other thing that was a real difference for me using the sensors was that, I, is this just me? I don't know. Sometimes I used to not check my levels because I probably thought that things were, I'd made some sort of misjudgment and things were probably not where I wanted them to be. And so I'd guess and I'd, I'd, I'd make a change based on no information at all. I'd either add some insulin or I'd eat some carbs. But when I'm wearing a sensor, it's all recorded anyway. So there's no need to do that. I'm not, I'm, you know, in a sense, I was only hiding from myself. I recognize that. But rather than trying to just read numbers I like, with a Libra, it's all recorded anyway. And so actually, I found I was concentrating on trying to improve what was actually happening on uh, rather than just trying to um, uh, improve the the, cho the numbers of times when I thought oh, I, I'm all right here, I can I can I can have a look at that one. So and it was just it was really it was really freeing actually to not feel so judged by it because it was just all going to get written down anyway. And I, I I've actually I was always finding I was going massively high after breakfast, and I would just change my breakfast a bit or change my change my routine um, rather than just not checking till lunchtime and hope it had come down. One thing I think it is important to bear in mind if you're moving on to a technology like uh, Libre or any, any of the sensor sort of technologies is that sensors and finger stick measurements, they're measuring different things. There's, a, there's always going to be that desire, if we're living with diabetes, to want the numbers to match up perfectly, to think that the, perhaps the finger stick meter is right and that Libra is, or whatever is, is massively inaccurate, but they're, they're measuring different things. And, and um, particularly when um, levels are moving quickly after you've eaten or um, after you've exercised, um, then th there's a sort of lag because it takes a little while for the glucose values in your, in your interstitial fluid, which is what the sensors read, to change um, more than it does in the capillary glucose, which is what the finger sticks measure. So, I mean, they try and keep that lag as short as they can. It's sort of five or ten minutes or something like that. Um, but there are times when the readings, if you check in the two different technologies, one after another, they're not going to be the same. Uh, and and there, there is information to show that the first 24 hours of a sensor might be slightly further out than the rest of the sensor. Sometimes, in my experience, it might be the first two days. But, but even when the, the levels are different, you're still getting that trend information, which can be really, really useful. And I think it's not a question of thinking that one is always right and the other is always wrong. Because sometimes your blood glucose meter will be way out. You know, it says that on the packaging. It says if it doesn't match the way you feel, you need to recheck. And so it's, it's, a, it's a, a question of using the information um, and, and just being slightly mindful that it won't always be the same and that one's not always right and one's not always wrong. There are things you can do to help, I think, the sensor read, read well. Keeping hydrated is really good because it's it's measuring the fluid around the cells. And if you're a bit dehydrated, there's not so much fluid, so it doesn't the changes don't happen as quickly. But you know, really enjoy it. If you get two, if you if you happen to be checking for a on a finger stick and you you happen to swipe at the same time and they match, some people call those unicorns because they're not they're not that common. But you know, enjoy them when they happen. But it's, but don't despair if you see differences between uh, finger stick readings that you're, you're taking and sensor readings that you're taking. And also, if it's really out, if you think this isn't right at all, then just contact Abbott. 
uh, who will talk you through, troubleshoot the way the sensor has been uh, fitted uh, and, a, and a few other just uh, things. And in my experience, if a sensor is not performing up to the standard that they would expect, then they'll replace it for you. Uh, and, and they'll replace it for the NHS. Same, same goes whether you're self-funding or, or getting it via your clinic. And it's, it's I, I can't st stress this enough, really. It's very easy when you suddenly get all this information. In the early days, I found it tremendously exciting. It was just brilliant. Uh, and, but after a while, you can start to feel a bit under pressure with all this information that's coming your way, particularly if you're kind of gradually working through trying to improve the numbers that you're seeing and diabetes is just not cooperating as it as it sometimes doesn't and you're you're you know you're not you're not seeing the progress that you would like or you think that that somehow it's going to be this ridiculous flat line that it won't even change at all well, that's just not natural that doesn't happen I, you know there are traces I've seen of people without diabetes who have got sensors on and their levels go up and down they go up half of two after food and they dip down and sometimes they go down below four and all those things we try and avoid those those peaks and those troughs they happen to everyone so so it's trying to set realistic expectations um, and to set realistic targets you know sometimes if you have your your target range set on on your your reader or your smartphone it's really small it can feel like you're failing all the time whereas actually you're doing brilliantly um, so so you know set realistic expectations um, that there will always be rises and falls when you're pretending to be your own pancreas and also just be slightly careful that you don't see rising or falling levels and always jump to act sometimes just ride it out a bit just you know be a little bit just perhaps be a little bit patient and see whether that that steeply rising will just might just level out and then come back into range whereas if you'd thought panicked and, and whacked in a big load of insulin you might you might come down quite fast but then you'll go down too far and then you'll have to eat some carbs and then you go back up too far and then you're on that kind of horrendous glucose coaster that we all know and loathe. Um, so yeah, just it's, this is information. It's not judgment. You know, it's, it's it's just take it gradually and just maybe just concentrate on one thing at a time and just gradually try and work from where you are to to, to slightly um, you know reduced uh, glucose variation and uh, you know just just slightly more in range numbers. And I, I think. It's, it's important to say that if you're going into um, using continuous data for the first time, it's really useful to get extra information and extra support. These videos are a brilliant resource to help you get the most out of using sensors. And you can also, you can share your, your readings and you can share your traces with your clinic or your, you know, your uh, DSN or your consultant. Um, and you can also, you can, you can connect with other people living with diabetes. You can... Um, uh, reach out to people on social media um, and and on uh, and on Facebook groups, and you can get hints and tips from them. So it's it's you know just don't don't feel cast adrift. Don't feel like you've got to you've got to solve all this by yourself because sometimes a fresh pair of eyes on your information can make an enormous difference, and people will spot things or make small suggestions that actually could could you know revolutionise the, the the way you you self manage your diabetes. Uh, so, so yeah, you connect with other people. I mean, there are some really, really useful uh, uh, Facebook groups uh, with people in the UK, with people who are um, uh, just starting out using uh, uh, sensors. Um, there's, a, there's a global group. There's a geeks group for people who want to get incredibly technical. And there's an off-topic group to talk not just about the, the ins and outs of using sensors themselves, but also the sort of general management of, of type 1 diabetes. And they're this really friendly bunch, you know. I mean, they're, 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 the admins run it a fairly tight ship, but it's, it's, it's really, you get really good support. And you can ask questions and people will come back to you. And another thing it would be really worth considering, particularly if you haven't ever looked or connected with people online before is Type 1 Resources, which is a project I'm involved in where what, what we've tried to do is to um, pick out some really useful stuff, whether that's uh, you know, Libra quizzes or, or websites or also blog posts or, or you know, Twitter things um, that allow you to connect with other people who live with type 1 diabetes day in and day out and face the same struggles as you do. And those are 
those are not the scary corner of the internet because those are uh, re um, reviewed by both people who live with diabetes and also healthcare professionals. So they're rated, they're reviewed, and they're reliable. And, and just if you've never done diabetes online, it's a really good place to start to get some good uh, ins, get some good... Um, uh, starting points and then you can find your own way you build your own online toolkit um, that's what I did a, a few years ago and uh, it made a huge difference to my experience of living with type 1